All right, let's begin learning how to handle the truth. So before we get started, a little bit of background. We're going to be dealing with simple and compound statements that have some truth value. Now, what that means is that a statement is either true or false. So not all statements in English follow this. So we might have questions of um, taste. We might have, say, a command, uh, or we might have a contradiction. And we'll talk about some of those later on. But when we look at, say, a simple statement, that is just something that is either true or false. If we say the sky is blue, that is a simple statement. It might be true, it might be false. Uh, when we put together simple statements, we build compound statements. And the way we're going to do that is basically by pulling together our logical operators and or and not in different orders in order to make different sorts of compound statements. Before we get into that, we will start with these relatively simple tools. So when we've got simple statements, by default, what we're going to do is we're going to think of them with some sort of a symbol. So we might have a symbol like P representing some statement and Q representing some other statement. So for example, I will pay you back the money I owe you. That could be true. That could be false. Uh, I am getting paid on Friday. That could be true. That could be false. We can put those two simple statements together to build a relatively simple compound statement. So I'm going to start actually with the very simplest rather than in the order I've got it here. We'll start with not. So let's say our statement is P. The weather is nice. Now, that's a subjective statement, so we need to define nice to really ask, is this true or false? What I think is a nice day is possibly different than what you think is a nice day, but let's just say we've got some agreed on version, some definition that works there. With not, the negation operator, when we say not P, we're doing exactly what you would think. We're taking a statement where if it is true, then the result is going to be false. So here we would read this as not P. This is our symbol, this little tilde, which I'm making messier by trying to repeat it. Or we could just say not P. So whatever the truth value of this is, not P is going to give you the reverse truth value. Today, as I record this, it happens to be a nice day. So if I want to build some compound statement, so for example, should I make macaroni and cheese, I could build a logical rule to tell me when do I make macaroni and cheese. And it would be something like, if the weather is not nice, then I want to make mac and cheese. If the weather is nice, then maybe I want to make a salad instead. All right. Not pretty simple. Not We don't even need multiple simple statements. It just takes one statement, whether that's a compound statement, right, including both of these, or a simple statement, including just one. We take the truth value and we return the opposite of that truth value. For and, we're asking, are two simple statements true at the same time? Or we actually might even be dealing with multiple simple statements altogether. So is P true and Q and R and S and so on? So the way we would write this is we would say something like P and Q. And that's going to be true if both are true. So this is a good point for us to introduce truth tables. So we've got P, we've got Q, and then we've got P and Q. I'm going to use the symbol here just to save some space. Now, what are our possible mixes of truth values for P and Q? Well, we might have both of them 
are true. We might have P is true, but Q is false. Or we might have Q is true and P is false. Or we might have both of them are false. Now, I'm going to add a little wrinkle here just to make this um, a little easier when we set up to look at this in the computer. True in a computer is very often denoted with a 1. So we could say 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. That'll help you save a little bit of time when you're trying to build logical compound statements out of simple statements using a computer because then you don't have to type out true and false. Uh, most computer programming uh, interfaces will deal with that automatically. Uh, you'll see that for sure when I put up some videos uh, of the Excel logic uh, assignment coming up next week. All right, so now let's look at our compound statement. P and Q. Is P and Q true for this first row? Yes, it is. For the second row, P is true, but Q is not. So it is not the case that we have P and Q. So let's go ahead and make up a uh, simple statement to represent Q. Um, let's say it is a Wednesday, which as I record this, it literally is. So is it Wednesday and is the weather nice? We'll stick with that. So I believe that the weather is nice today and it is a Wednesday. So we would be in this row of the truth table. But in the second row, it is not nice weather and a Wednesday. For the third row, it's bad weather and a Wednesday, so it is not nice weather and a Wednesday. And of course, the last one is also false because neither of them are true. All right, that's relatively simple. And we could make this even more uh, elaborate by, say, adding in another thing. Let's say P, Q, and R. So if we added in R, in this case, we're going to double our range of possibilities. So maybe this represents everything that is the case when we have R is true. And then we'd have another four rows where R is false below that. So basically, as you add simple statements, you're going to double how many possibilities you have, how many rows you need in your truth table. All right, let's move on to OR. So or, again, we'll say P, Q, and P or Q. I should have changed colors here. Let's just isolate that a little bit. So again, we have these possibilities where P is true, where Q is true. I'll make these trues instead of ones. Where Q is false, P is false, or both are false. So what is the truth table of P or Q? Is the weather nice or it's Wednesday? Well, if both are true, then P or Q is true. If one is true and the other is false, then P or Q is also true. And of course, if neither are true, then neither P nor Q is true, so we couldn't say that P or Q is true. All right, that is our first three basic symbolic logic operators. These allow us to take two simple statements and make a compound statement out of them. In our next video, we'll look at the same thing using logic gates, which is going to be pretty simple. Uh, but here we've also introduced the truth table where we're just laying out all of our possible combinations of the truth values of our compound statements. And then we've got a column in our truth table to represent the truth value of the compound statement itself. And then with these truth tables, well, first off, we're really defining what P and Q is here or P or Q. And that's going to become important when we start looking at the conditional, if, uh, if P then Q, but we'll get to that later.